Yes, thank you. You can hear me now. Check, check. Good. I uh, <clears throat> so it's this this whole lockdown thing is uh, it's it's obviously okay now. Now it's like coming to eleven o'clock here, and uh, and it just seems like it's nine a.m. in the morning. Like nothing really happens from the day you wake up till the the, the morning you you go to. Oh yeah, I've got a big one there. That's a, that's a nice heckle from the chat. Like, yeah, you've got a big one. I don't know why he said that, but uh, yeah, Michael, still alive. Uh, I'm just a small. Oh, okay. Now we're having a little banter here going on. Per shaped or not per shaped? Hey, um, where was I? Shit, I just, yeah, sorry, my, uh, my, my head goes a bit, uh, as you can see, I've really worked my material very well for you tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, no, I just, the first two jokes were completely, uh, you know, from my set. And uh, uh, anyway, so I was talking about lockdown. And you realize, you, you actually do realize that nobody, that, like, not and not everybody has to be outside you know it's like it's okay for some people to just not be outside and uh well it's also okay for some people to just not stay alive as well i mean that's that's all right i don't know what what your views about it i don't know if you've lost any people to coronavirus but i haven't lost anybody yet anybody yet to uh the covid uh, but uh, I don't know. It's still going on, right? And uh, third, third, uh, third lockdown uh, going on. And uh, <clears throat> what's going on here? I need to. I need to. Uh, yeah, I'm, it's it's my uh, it's my ADHD. Sorry, but uh, sorry, I'm just been rumbling. But anyway, that got me thinking about. Um, that got me thinking about a few things. I think there's going to be some really interesting films being remade this year, you know, uh, 2021. Uh, what about uh, four vaccines and a funeral? That, that should be a good one. Uh, Bat Soup. Uh, arising again or whatever. Uh, Lost Raiders of the Closed Park. That silence is really terrifying. Uh, where was I? Yes. Um, Wuhan flew over the cuckoo's nest. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, of course, uh, <clears throat> the Fumigator, one and two. And uh, how about bringing back the duo? Uh, fears of tears, huh? How's that? How's that? Brilliant. Um, just before I leave you, and uh, I, I say it sadly because I, I, uh, I, I don't even think that we bonded yet, and, I'm no. just, and I have to go back to you know, to sitting here and and my my lockdown. I have a, I have my cat, but it's uh, and and I and I had a girlfriend uh as well uh during the first one and uh, just just for the record how many lockdowns have you had like so far we're on three. what's that we're on three three okay and uh, how you determine these lockdowns by just like how many people are in um, boris makes it up so we have that we have the normal lockdowns mm. and then we have a tier system with uh oh, yeah. Gradual uh, erosion of, of uh, ability to go out or do anything. Yeah. Uh, so there was tier one to four, and then they uh, they relaxed tier four. So then they have to rate, rate tier five, and every time that. So um, basically, when we're in a lockdown, that's an official lockdown, then that costs the government money. And when we're in a tier, then um, it costs them less money. So they spend all their time arguing about tiers and lockdowns and tiers. I I just got notified from Brian that he wants me to wrap it up uh obviously it went brilliant but i i okay that's uh that's a great way to end the show just to have an explanation from you anthony about the lockdown system yes um, 
So I don't know. I I just uh, okay. So I have nothing more to say. I guess I I tried to say it all. Uh, I tried to say it all. Um, so. Um, yeah. So I would say, uh, can we have a round of applause for Yari? Um, the internet is making a noise, but you can't hear it. So uh, sorry about that. It's just the way things are. Um, uh, yeah. So yes, we are in a lockdown. I, I, I don't know the answer to that. There's no other answer to, apart from waiting for the vaccine to work. So we're just here, locked down forever. The only other solution I could come up with was hibernation, um, where we just slow our body temperatures down to, uh, you know, slow our heartbeats down and then uh, just curl up and sleep. And I reckon if we slept for about three months, that would solve the problem. But um, it doesn't really seem to take off as a solution. Anyway, I'm going to get on with what I'm supposed to be here for, which is introducing the axe. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Alan Lister. Great pleasure to be back at Pearship, this time in dystopia. When Pearship was physical and at the Fitzroy Tavern, I went along and I was the audience on several occasions in that I was the audience, just me in the front row. And when I got the nerve to stand up behind the mic, um, I had the pleasure of being ignored by upwards of 15 people on many occasions. Now we're in dystopia, we're all virtual, I can be ignored on a global scale 24-7. Brian, Crystal, thank you for the opportunity. Now, being ignored comes with the territory. I'm no fool, I know that, especially when you're starting out. It can go on for years. People who've seen me have told me that it, it will go on for years, probably longer. Uh, but hey, I'm not giving up. And Pear Shaped has been a great springboard for a lot of people. The last live at Fitzroy Tavern's Pear Shaped comedy was on 24th of June, 2015. Um, and this is the running order. Recognise any names? No, didn't think you would. Brian's writing's appalling. But I've done a little piece that looks exactly like the bit where they explain who's died this year in the BAFTAs. See if you recognise them now. By the way, as far as I know, they're not dead. Now, Tons of other people did incredibly well at Pear Shaped. It just so happens that these three people, Rosie, Sindhu and Robert, had nothing else to do on the 24th of June 2015. Except perhaps some bigger gigs later in the evening. But that's not the point. They were there. Um, and I was there too. There I am, look. Just basking in the afterglow of John Sharp and introducing the unique comedy stylings of Anna Domini. That's me. Now, I didn't get famous, but over the past five years, how has it gone for me on the fortune front? Now, I've not had so much money of late, and I think Google in its wisdom has picked up on the fact that I haven't had so much money, and it's starting to offer me advice and help from people it thinks are appropriate. For example, this arsehole keeps popping up in my timeline. Yep, Nigel Farage. I don't want to see Nigel Farage's face on my timeline. The only place I want to see Nigel Farage's face is on a failed airbag. So I thought I'd try and stop Google doing this to me and Facebook and all the others by starting to look at high cost luxury items, boats, yachts, islands, houses, that kind of thing. And to be honest, that's just made it worse because now Google thinks I have got a lot of money and taunts me and taunts me and taunts me. But the real thing is, I'm not fit to have money. I don't know what to do with it. Well, I do know what to do with it. And certainly I have discovered the two most lethal things you can put together. Lots of time on my hands, endless opportunities to drink at home, late nights, not having to get up early to go to work. And you will find these two things. You may have already discovered them. Now, the two most dangerous things you can put together are not arrogance and ignorance or men and guns. They are alcohol and eBay. You can buy things from your past on eBay. Toys, things that made you happy. Last night, half 11, and I catch sight of some Lego. 
I'm having that let go. I'm having my past back. I deserve it. I had a terrible time lately. Why not rekindle a bit of that childhood joy? Sure enough, come one o'clock, I am the proud owner of 25 quid worth of Lego. I paid £2,600 for it. Please eBay responsibly. I've been Alan Lister. See you next time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 I, I feel sorry for the audience, whoever they are. I feel sorry for them. This is this, uh, this is unbearable, and I don't like other people's online shows. So this is even worse. Is there uh, any audience? Is there any audience? Uh, I, yeah, there is. Yeah, they keep coming in, and. Um, because uh, I gave him the wrong link, you see. I gave him the performance link, like an idiot. And um, they're, uh, they're coming in, and we keep kicking them out so that the axe can get back in. That's why I couldn't get myself. As we invited. <laughs> so, my, uh, Michael Ayers, you're not supposed to be in this link. You're supposed to be in a, a, another one. You're supposed to be looking at it on Facebook or something like that. La, 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 la. And the same for you, Dave the Clark. You're supposed to be looking at it on the uh, bleeding. Uh, some, I sent you the wrong link. Well, I'm looking at the Facebook page. I can't see it there, Brian, which is. Pardon? I thought I had a look at the Facebook page. I can't uh, see um... it. Brian. On pear shaped in dystopia. Pear shaped in dystopia yeah. is the page for it. Uh, and uh, we've also disgraced ourselves probably on Twitter and uh, Twitch. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. But don't worry, we can. 
we can live it down. So, Anthony. Yeah. I have to go out with a florist. Did you? Well, we had an arrangement. Hey! Yeah. Be a joke. Oh. <laughs> right. You can't remember the next bit, can you? No. Just one florist. Just the one florist? No, nah, there was a whole bunch of them. Hey! <laughs> There's more to this, isn't there? Do you know when you don't do your act for fucking six months, you you start wondering what it is Did you or do what it was. We had an you weren't an arrangement, yeah. I I did, you weren't listening, right. mate. No, you because were, I was trying to You were busy mucking this. around with a computer. So where's Jeremy trying to let gone? The acting. I don't know. She's she's on on there. Uh, she's probably given up. Right. Yeah. Anyway, so, right. Yeah. Um, I think what we should do. I, I, anyway, listen, can you hear me? Yeah. Good. So All Ron's right. there. We can, he can. Yeah. Ron is going to be. Is Ron is going to be up next? Yeah. La 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 la. What's the next bit? Um. You surprised her. I surprised her. Yeah, I surprised her on her birthday. I remembered. Hey. <laughs> Uh, I, I took her up the Arsenal as a special treat. That was a surprise because she thought we were going to a football match. People still don't like that joke. La 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 la. I, I'm just playing for time here. Right, That's just put Matt run on then. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, the headline act to your evening, the one and only Mad Ron. Right, so I'm locked up again. Uh, sharing the cell with a few of my old buddies, a few old cellmates of mine uh, in the uh, top bunk behind me. There's uh, John Claude. Um, he's not French. He got attacked by a cat. Um, bottom bunk over there is Test Match Tony. Send him out to do a job, and five days later, there's still no result. And then uh, in front of me in the bunk is uh, Fingers McGee. Uh, he had an affair with Paul Daniel's wife. So. Uh, Locked up for Christmas again. Not very good, to be honest. Uh, Angela hasn't even been to see me. Uh, she's been banned from public transport. Turns out that uh, topless buses aren't the same concept as topless beaches. But never mind. Um, but I remember my first Christmas, Christmas Day, 1974. I was eight years of age. I was delighted to see all the presents under the tree. Uh, they were free with my name on. Opening up the first two. I was delighted to find a box of matches and 20 embassy number one. Dad was in a good mood, so he patiently taught me how to light up, blow smoke rings and cough correctly, carefully explaining there are three things that shouldn't have blood in, a cough, a stool sample and a fillet steak. The third present was best of all, a sock full of snooker balls, my first ever weapon and one I still use to this day. I was a bit disappointed to find out it's one of my own socks and that uh, the highest break at the snooker club had gone down from 147 to 126. Two reds and a blue. But over the years, I've grown out of love with snooker. Uh, too much maths involved for my liking. Um, not really a big fan of sport. I don't like boxing either. Don't see why you should get undressed to fight. Uh, I do like cricket. Cricket is an amazing sport. Cricket is where you round up the most ginger people in the country, send them off to the world's hottest countries and watch them suffer. But uh, when I got out of the nick last time, I found out smoking was bad for you. But in the 60s, smoking was good for you. The question we should all be asking ourselves is, why did they change the recipe? Smoking used to turn you into a man. You could take a 14 year old with a squeaky voice, make him smoke 4,000 cigarettes. And only 10 days later, he's talking like a man. And now kid's about 34 before his voice breaks. Nobody smokes these days. Everyone just vapes. And if you lot vape, see, the answers are so high pitched, you can't even hear them. And you're not even allowed to smoke in the car with your kids. They have to stand outside to smoke theirs. 
I'm not a fan of modern technology. They reckon there's as much computer power on a mobile phone as it took to get a man to the moon. And what does everyone do with it? Rearrange strawberries. Things like soap used to be a solid with the word soap written on the bar. And the main ingredient of soap was soap. Now it's a liquid in a jar with a vegetarian shopping list stuck to the side. And if you fast forward 10 years, it's probably going to be a gas with a poem on it. The brakes on modern cars are now so good, it's taking the skill out crossing the road. And in the 60s, makeup was safe because it had been tested on animals. Now you can't even put lipstick on a horse without being arrested. And I'm not a fan of that email either. Back in the day when I was a kid, if we wanted to send each other a message, we'd just chuck a brick through the window. I remember an argument with Barry went on for about four months and by only replying to every other message, managed to get enough bricks to build my mum a bungalow. Abandoned the dating service, Barry's mum got hit by a breeze block with a dick pic on it. But you lot can't meet anyone without a computer these days, can you? I remember when I met my wife, Angela, I saw her across a crowded bar. I couldn't take my eyes off her jewellery. I wandered over and got talking and after a bit of cajoling, she convinced me to go back to her place for a bit of VHS and DOS. Or what you lot call Netflix and chill. Where I made love to her like a man should. Robustly and before the kettle had boiled. Three weeks later, she announced she was pregnant. And four years after that, she gave birth to our son. Now, me and Angela, we get on all right, but uh, we had a row just before I came in here. Not very happy about it. She started it. She turned to me and she said, Ron, she said, because she's on 80 fags a day. She said, Ron, not everyone looks like you. If a second-hand car salesman was to describe you, he'd say something like, you're a clapped-out old banger with too many miles on the clock, damaged body work, been around the block a few and too many times, um, makes strange noises and produces toxic emissions. Well, I wasn't happy, was I? And I may have overreacted. I said, Angela, if an estate agent was to describe you, he'd say something like, compact, quirky, light and airy, with unique features in need of some cosmetic improvement. Boasting exposed beams, having recently been extended by the current owner to give a wonderfully flowing entertainment space. Mature gardens front and rear. Well, she thought I was in the wrong. I thought she was in the wrong. So as a compromise, we both slept in the spare room. Uh, just take a moment, talk about my upcoming tour. I've got 68 dates up and down the country. Come and see me wherever you like. Um, the nearest one here is in Camden. Um, that's, uh, what was that, that, May the 5th. And that's at 3 a.m. in the HSBC. And we are still looking for a driver, if anyone's interested. Um, what else can I tell you? Normally I ask if anyone's got any questions, but it sounds like you're all deaf or dumb or something. I don't know. Um, right. All I've got to say now is I've been mad, Ron. Just remember, you haven't seen me. I was never here. And this never happened. Hi, John. Catherine, hello and welcome to Two Men's of Pat and Matt. My question for you, Catherine, mm -hmm. is a science question tonight. Oh. Mm. You like science, don't you? What is in a black hole? Oh, well, the eternal question. <laughs> um, I think that in a black hole there's... There's so much nothing, mm. and it becomes something. You know what I mean? Like, um, like you know, you know when you're lonely. Yeah. And and it goes on for so long, doesn't it? That empty, empty feeling inside. 
you know, I just haven't felt anything. And then it, it goes on for so long that it becomes like a really heavy weight in the core of your being, doesn't it? And you're like, but I felt nothing for so long. Why do I now feel so much? I think I think it's like that. What um what 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 do you think? I mean partly I think wow. Thank you. But also I think what this is because I've studied science and what this is it's the theory of alternate universes and I am led to believe that inside every black hole is a chrysalis mm. and that chrysalis has the potential to either be Debbie McGee or Chris Tarrant. Wow. Yeah, kind of like a Schrodinger's B-list celebrity. Yeah. Oh, wow. But massive and that burns like a thousand suns. Like um, like Chris Tarrant and Debbie McGee's um, celebrity. Exactly. Exactly so. But lasting for all time. Oh. Oh, well, that was that was Pat and Matt talking about Debbie McGee. I have to uh, so I admit, mean, I, I kind of think Debbie McGee, get, McGee gets a hard time because um, obviously she was the brains of the outfit. You know, she did. She was the one who had to squeeze herself into small spaces. And apparently, because I, I'm not just well, I saw, so I thought I'd think about it. <coughs> apparently, women weren't allowed to join the magic circle for the 1990s. So the only way Debbie McGee could get on television was by uh, pretending to be... Uh, Paul Daniel's assistant when actually she was thinking everything out. It's uh, it's very true, you know. She she was the brains of the outfit. Um, because the, th the thing about magic is, you know, magicians when you watch them, and we used to watch them at pear shape, you'd see them, and as soon as you see them from the side, you realise it's nonsense. It's completely obvious. So I went to this gig once with this man, and he was, uh, uh, and then I saw him again the next week, and he's, he'd been going on about this massive gig he was doing, and, and I thought, oh, that's great, yeah. I saw him the next week and I said, well, how did it go? He said, well, it was terrible. I only did two minutes because they hadn't told me it was in the round. So all my tricks are two dimensional. So if you see them from any other angle, you know, they, they don't work. So there they, they you are, it, it, it's rubbish. It, you know, it, it doesn't work because you, you see it. It only works if you see it from a particular angle. So, I mean, when Paul Daniels used to say, well, we're on television, there are no camera tricks. Well, the camera trick is that it's in two dimensions because it's a camera. So it's not a 3D thing. And, uh, you know, uh, unless you see magic in 3D, you can't really judge it, I think. That is, that is my thought on pattern math that I had because I was able to watch this earlier, whereas everything else I have not been able to think about beforehand. So I thought I'd write something in advance to give the illusion that I'm paying enormous attention to what is going on. But actually, this is all stuff that I've written down in order to have something to say because otherwise I feel like we're just missing everything or missing some kind of um, sort of interaction because there isn't. Um, I would have said something about what Yarrow said, but it was so quiet that I couldn't really. Anyway, um, so uh, that's that's what I used to do. So sort of. uh, I don't know what other function I perform. Um, I'm sort of waiting for Brian to tell us who the next act is. Uh, well, you'll never guess who it is. It's <laughs> it's another two minutes of Pat and Matt. Hi, Sean. Catherine, hello. Welcome. To two men's of pattern math. Right. Yeah. Today's question, yes. and I'm asking you, Sean, this because you seem like the kind of person that might be into this. Uh, could it be magic? Ooh. Do you know who has probably asked this question many times? No. And that's the great friend of the show, Debbie McGee. Yes. Because when you're with someone with the skills and charisma of a, of a young Daniels, a Daniels at his peak, mm. you know, that sort of consummate lovemaking prowess, yeah. you must be asking yourself afterwards, is this just Paul's natural ability or, or is this the dark arts? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And what no, a person. No man though. could be that tender, you'd be saying. Yeah. And you know, poor poor Paul. 
you know. Yeah. Um, can no one ever knows the true you? Uh, did, they? did Paul even know where he ended and the magic began? We'll never know, will we? Uh, well, I mean, what do you think? Could it be magic? I mean, I think it's who you're asking, really, mm. because, like, if you're asking, you know, like um, a, a serf mm -hmm. from feudal England, uh, you know, a thousand years ago, yeah, everything would be magic, wouldn't it? Mm. You know, the concept, uh, you know, of, uh, like, t turning a light on, electricity, yeah. um, it would be mind blowing, wouldn't it? Twitter. Yeah. Imagine trying to explain the concept of Twitter to you know to somebody who doesn't know anything about the uh, modern world. Yeah, um, my mother. Yeah, yeah, exactly like your mother. Um, you know, because it just yeah, I mean, it's just bollocks. Bollocks, isn't it? Bollocks, it is. Oh, well, that was bollocks. Um, that, that, was, was, that, that was good, wasn't it? Good yeah, it was good, yeah. It was good bollocks, yeah. Yeah, good yeah, bollocks. Was, yeah excellent. The, the bollocks was excellent. Uh, are you unable to project your image, Brian? Is, is that why we can never see you? Oh, uh, It's because I have a glamorous assistant who keeps fucking everything up. So it's ruined oh. me. <laughs> it's just not responding. She's made a right. Uh, yeah. Everything yeah. has been oh. broken. If it helps, the center of a black hole is a singularity. That was. I, I, now, now that you've mentioned that, I, I feel better. But, uh, yeah. yeah, that explains everything, really. Oh, what a fucking myth. It's just a point that where nothing exists. Like, hey? no, it's just right. a point where we're 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 I, No, we're not. Uh, we're, do me a favor. Hang on, right. we've got to do the finish. What's the big finish? Oh, pear shape, pear to pear shape, every Wednesday night at half past eight. Since she out, pear shape, it was pear shape, loads of cold chicken, no more hay. It's pear shape, it's fuck all chicken in the way home, that you'll be coming back again, was too we're going to buy a new computer and um, more money for our internet, uh, yeah. upgrade the uh, fucking stream yard. So yeah. it's, it's just two or three of us on there go, is this all right? Yeah, it's all right. You can hear you and I can see you. But you put 10 people on there and all of a sudden it's a lot of which doesn't help uh, yeah they, it doesn't help that we sent out the wrong link so yeah uh, so uh, all we're all in the green room yeah which, <laughs> yeah so we should have uh, four five or six people so we have to keep chucking it chucking people out so i could get in and yeah. uh, one of our apps failed to get in her name was brabantia angel card readings and she was all dressed up for the occasion and everything we had her and then and we lost her she was here and then she uh i, I thought she'd commit suicide but she just couldn't get back in like i oh, could um, there's always another opportunity to commit suicide at Pershing. I there is next wednesday 8 30 you'll <laughs> yeah. uh, be here at eight o'clock on the dot Trying to make sure that the uh, the internet works. Ow, you've been practicing the minute. Hang on, we're supposed. To, yeah, this is the green room. Right, we're going to end the broadcast. Thank you yeah. for everybody who persevered and showed up. And uh, yeah. we'll try again next yeah. week. Yeah. Better. You can stay uh, stay and watch the post mortem and see if we're going to carry on talking. Please.